Hey everyone, it's Anna J. Wellner with the Bookish Nook, part of the Author Library Network in association with Creative Edge Publicity. And with me today, I have Mark Leslie Lefevre. Mark, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey Anna, great to uh, great to be here. Uh, I am basically I'm a writer, a bookseller. I've been in the book industry since 1992. I've worked in almost every kind of bookstore imaginable, from independent bookstore to chain to big box to online bookstores, ebook stores, campus bookstores, um, and also I've been a writer uh, since 1992. And my well, I've been a writer since before then, but my very first work was published in 92. I've got more than 25 books out. Uh, mostly I write under the name Mark Leslie because no one can ever spell or pronounce Lefebvre. Um, okay. But because I've worked in the book industry and a lot of people uh, call me by my actual French surname, uh, I do have a series of books about the business of writing and publishing for authors published under Mark Lefebvre, which again is difficult to find. <laughs> But that's what we're here to talk about today. Mark has just released two new books, one in collaboration with Joanna Penn, and they're all part of a series to help authors on their publishing journey. Can you tell us about the series and how it helps self-published authors gain insight into that murky world of self-publishing? Yeah, for sure. So I, I started a series of books called Stark Publishing Solutions. Now, I, I adopted the name Stark Publishing back in 2004, when I self-published my very first book. And I, and I did it because there, there still is a stigma against self-publishing. And there was a, a much larger stigma back then in 2004, because that was even before Kindle uh, launched and, and, and actually created a whole new boon for, for self-publishing eBooks and making it a lot more affordable. So uh, with Stark uh, was the registered name of the company I, I generated. Um, the logo was designed by my best friend, Steve, Steve and Mark. It was a company we dreamed of having when we were kids. We actually had a DJ company called Stark Entertainment when we were in college. And, um, and so he designed the logo for me and I said, hey, is it okay if I use Stark uh, Publishing as my, as my company? And so, uh, yeah, so Stark has been my brand. I launched a podcast in 2018 called Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing, where, where I want to just share uh, about the business of writing and publishing. And so sort of launched from that podcast where I weekly share, you know, interviews with writers uh, and more about, you know, the, the business and behind the scenes of writing and publishing. Oh. And uh, I'm inclusive of whether an author is traditionally published or self-published. I kind of embrace oh. all uh, opportunities. And so the Cirque Publishing Solutions series, which launched with um, the seven P's of publishing success, which is really just my observation, having worked 30 years in the book industry of what are, what are the seven most common things that uh, the authors who are very, very successful, what, what are the attributes that they all have in common? And that was the seven P's of publishing success. Then I, I wrote uh, Killing It on Kobo, having uh, worked at Kobo for six years and created their self-publishing platform, Kobo Writing Life, when I was there. Sort of a behind the scenes look at how authors can actually leverage Kobo and understand the differences between Kobo and, and Kindle and, and other platforms. Uh, then I did an author's guide to working with bookstores and libraries. Then uh, Wide for the Win, which is, you know, publishing wide successfully. And then, of course, the latest uh, one, which is uh, so sort of a follow-up to the seven P's of publishing success. Uh, it was going to be the seven pitfalls of publishing, but I ended up with like 30 <laughs> pitfalls because unfortunately, um, this is called publishing pitfalls for authors. Unfortunately, there's, um, there's a lot of pitfalls authors can fall yeah. right to. Oh, absolutely. I know whenever I first started, I mean, uh, it was just, I mean, daunting because there are so many different things that you need to know and uh, so many things that were confusing to me. And I was like the deer in a headlights frozen in indecision on which way I wanted to go. And should I put this here and should I do that here or should I go wide or should I go? And so uh, that would have been a great, I wish that I would have known about that book whenever I first started writing. So guys, if you're new to self-publishing, definitely check out the entire Stark Reflection series uh, on uh, publishing because it will uh, give you a, a helpful leg up from the get-go. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. One thing that I still, um, I hear people talking about bicycles all the time. And can you, as an insider who's been on that inside behind the scenes um, part of ebook publishing, 
what does that mean and why is it important? And what should self-published authors know? What do you wish that they knew about BISEX and what it's, how to oh, kind of- Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. So um, BISEC, uh, uh, Book Industry Standards and Advisory, uh, um, as book, book Industry Standards and Communications. And uh, it's from the Book Industry Study Group, BISG, who just created what are meant to be universal categorizations for books in metadata. So this is basically the files that are uh, exchanged between publishers and retailers, for example, that say, here's this book, here's the ISBN, International Standard Book Number, which is a, like a fingerprint for a book. Here's the title, here's the author name, here's the publication date. Now the BISAC subject codes are the subject classifications. There's about 3,500 that are universally recognized by the book industry in general. Now the challenge with BISAC codes is they're generic and they're meant to be, where would you classify? Where would you put this in a bookstore? Like what section of the bookstore? So, you know, half of the list is fiction and the other half is nonfiction. And all the nonfiction categories can be biographies. They could be cookbooks. They could be uh, memoirs. They could be self-help and psychology, or they could be, and then there's also a JUV, juvenile for kids. Right. And so when authors are publishing a book or publishers are publishing a book, they select the category that says, these are the categories that we think it should be in mystery or thriller or romance or whatever. And there's sub classifications, right? So romance has 50 subcategories, at least uh, that, that sort of thing. It, but then the retailer accepts the file and then the retailer may not use the exact BISAC code. They may have their own unique variation of the book industry code. And so then they have a mapping where they translate it from this category to that category. And then other places have additional categorizations. Um, you know, so there's additional categorizations within Kindle that aren't necessarily part of BISAC. And the same thing is true for other retailers. Most retailers will have a, a dumbed down version of BISAC uh, that has less classifications. Uh, now, the difference between a, a bookstore where you walk into a bookstore and an online bookstore like uh, Amazon or right. any other online bookstores is when you walk into a bookstore, if there's only one copy of a book physically, and it could be in one of two categories, <laughs> the yeah. booksellers will shelve it in where they think it's most likely to be found and sold. But online, you can have multiple categories because it's virtual. You can walk right. down 20 different virtual aisles and potentially right. use that. So that's that. And that's important because people tend to shop uh, based on categories. Oh, I like to read this kind of book. So I'm going to go to the romance section or I'm going to browse through this category. Um, and, and all of the algorithms online also, that's usually how people find books because they're connected because they're in the same category. They're looking at the top seller lists, that sort of right. thing. And getting into the algorithm with, and you can drill down, especially we'll uh, talk on Amazon really quick. KDP yeah. allows you to, if you, if you guys didn't know, uh, going to the help section, you actually can list your book in up to 10 categories, not just the two that they give you when you're actively uploading your book and their drill down list can get uber specific i know on on amazon.com specifically not so much in other countries but yeah. on amazon amazon.com is their biggest one and then like their other right. sites except for the uk are pretty much throwaway they're just kind of like you know ugly stepchildren that kind of sort of like, you know what i mean like they treat them like cinderella <laughs> you know and and it's so funny because my book is uh my the first in the series made number one in in india and someone told me about it and i went to go look and apparently they do not have young adult uh as a category at all in india so my book was classified as horror and i'm like these poor people if they pick up this book it is not horror at all right. <laughs> so so they just kind of you know take that and and yeah so so your book uh categories on amazon.com may not necessarily be the same on any other uh dot you know i am well there's also keywords that come into consideration so right. when you enter your keywords in kdp that may add it automatically to other classifications now it can exist in up to 10 so you you're allowed to select two you can use keywords to get into some yep. other ones. You can also go to the help and you can email, basically email message them to say, could yep. you please add my book to these categories? Even if it's in all 10, 
you're not going to see all 10. No. If I look at your book, I may see a different three classifications and you may see a different three. So it's this really bizarre world of smoke and mirrors where you're never really sure, but hopefully <laughs> it works out in the long run. And hopefully the right people, the right readers will be yeah. presented with, with your book at the right time. And that's why it's really important to not just focus on uh, on the online uh, marketing to 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 get exposure outside of just one platform, so that your book is discoverable everywhere, and then mainstream media, and then you know pu the publicity that we do, and getting your brand, building your brand as an author is so yeah. important. And you talk about that as one of the publishing pitfalls, actually predators and pitfalls of independent authors. Can you tell us some of the things yeah. to really watch out for out there? Because, <laughs> because yes, it is, there's this preconceived notion about certain types of individuals and certain types of things that independent authors are very wary of. And right. so can you just, a little bit of information sure. about yeah i mean predators are so prevalent in the publishing industry that um and and on both the traditional and the self-publishing side they're so prevalent it's a multi-billion dollar business because they live on the hopes and dreams of writers and they yeah. basically they're like vampires preying on the lifeblood of the hope and dreams of a writer and so they're so prevalent in fact that uh, the book is in alphabetical order by the, the different P's, right? So Predators is going to come way, way later in the book. But it was so important that I had to put it up front. I, I did a first one that's called P is for Predator. And I talk about them a little bit and say, there's a full chapter on this, but I need you to, if you don't read anything else in this book, understand this. There are people whose sole business is to trick writers into buying services they do not need and yeah. selling them the sizzle, not the steak. And all of these false promises and, and, and lies, outright lies about what they need, et cetera. And in my experience, uh, I have uh, done talks in front of thousands of, of authors around the world. And in almost every audience I attend, there's always some author that I feel so terrible for who puts up their hand and said, but I paid $10,000 and they promised me this and they promised me that. And, and what I want so desperately, if I can do one good thing in the, in the publishing world, is to help inform authors uh, about that. So a, a few things to look out for is, uh, I, I, I attribute this back to Hamlet, me, me think the lady doth protest too much. Anyone uh -huh. who dares yes. to call themselves a real publisher is not a real publisher. I guarantee you, if they say we're a real publisher, they're not. They're, they're a crook, they're a shyster, they're a scam artist, any of those things, and they're trying to bilk you out of their money. Because Random House, Penguin Random House, the world's largest publisher, doesn't have to say on their website, oh, we're a real publisher. <laughs> um, they also trick authors by using different terms. So I'm a hybrid author. And, and the, the, the original term of hybrid author is I work with traditional publishers. I, I, I've worked with several different traditional publishers and licensed rights to them, etc. cetera. Uh, I've also self-published. So I'm hybrid. I'm, I fully accept both. They've right. started to adapt hybrid publishing or hybrid author in terms of oh hybrid means that you pay for your own publishing and that is because they used to use it was vanity press which they got a bad name for so then yep. they're, yep, they're yep, always yep. changing their names and and and, and saying and well no, people are on to us we better trick, yeah. we better trick them again yeah um and and so it's really really frustrating the other thing too is um, I've seen them sell marketing packages for thousands of dollars where they just give you a little pamphlet that I could knock out in about 15 minutes for an author <laughs> to I, only I had that, for thousands of dollars. That's for sure. I, you know, I, I've, I, I, I will fully and freely admit that there were some services that I signed up for in the beginning that promised a great ROI, which is return on investment. Yeah. And I did not get that ROI. And it was an, an expensive, costly mistake that turned into a very valuable learning lesson yes. um, that I won't, will not use that service again. And, and no, but you're sharing that fact to help other yeah. authors, which is great because that's the other thing you got to be leery of. Anyone who promises a, right. a, a, a certain amount of sales, nobody can promise anything. 
the, the publishing industry is filled with some of the smartest people I've ever had the privilege of working with in my life. And even the smartest people at the world's biggest publisher still quite, yeah, the chances are the new, the new JK Rowling book or the new, the new uh, James Patterson book or the new Stephen King book is probably going to sell billions of copies. But, but for the most part, they, they pick up authors all the time, new authors, and they believe it's going to, they believe every book they publish is going to be a huge success. And only 20% of what they publish is actually, you know, 20% makes um, 80% of their, their revenue. And, and right. that's something to be aware of of these predators is 80% of the revenue comes from stiffing authors with a big bill and overcharging them for stuff they don't need. 20% of the revenue may come from sales if they're lucky. Uh, the other yeah. thing that these predators do is they often will require that authors buy a minimum amount of copies of the books. <laughs> Just I, like I've had that. Yes, 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 yes. I, I, um, I'm not going to mention specific names, but if you've been around, if you've published at any point in time, you've probably gotten a phone call from a company that yeah. says, hey, we would love to publish your book Nobody and we found your <laughs> your information through the library of congress and uh you know it and 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 the funniest thing was it was over a year after i had already published and released that book of course and i was like you're a little late because you know, they were preying on, but they were preying on the fact you're thinking, right. oh my God, a big New York publisher wants. So the question, if anyone ever approaches you as an author, here's the response. How much of an advance are you going to give me? And if they're not giving you an advance, chances are they're trying to get money from you. Money should flow to the writer. Now, if you're self-publishing, well, you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, right. and entrepreneurs need to invest. That means I'm going to hire an editor, I'm going to hire a cover designer, I'm going to hire different professionals to help me with my business. But I do that as a business owner, not as an author who says, oh, here, publisher, here's $5,000, yeah. publish my book for me. Right. Publishers take on Huge writers difference. because they believe that the investment they put in the writers is actually going to pay off and that both the publisher and the author are going to make money. And that's what re a real publisher is, as opposed to a scam artist just trying to trick authors. And a huge red flag, and I think that you'll agree with me, is if you're asked to pay anything up front. Yes, for sure. Um, that's that's one of the biggest things to, to, to watch out for. But you are so right that we are a, a, a small business in and of ourselves as traditionally published. Now, I did start, you know, uh, Silver Dawn Publishing is a publishing house to publish under for tax purposes, yep, and uh, to because that 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 is an important thing that also lends legitimacy. Even though there are very few people under the house, it still lends legit legitimacy to a self-published author. So if you have the capability to start your own publishing house just for you to publish under, um, then then just like start publishing, then because you. You, you did that to to publish just just yourself, you know? Initially, yeah. I, I, right. ended up, I ended up taking on a few people. I know, I know how that works. You know how it happened. It's just yeah. like a, someone you really admire, like a, right. a, a good friend, and you're like, well, hey, well, why don't we, why don't we do this collaboratively? Um, yes, yeah, and that's exactly how it ha has um happened but uh but but yeah that that's 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 completely different and there are independent there are small publishers now who actively go out and seek authors and they don't necessarily know what they are doing i'm not putting us in that category because we've yeah. both uh i think proven that that we know what we're talking about but these are smaller companies that that will go out and hit up pitmad for example i've heard terrible stories um in the writing community about independent presses small presses that are not necessarily vanity presses but that they just don't see any help at all from this small house right and so that's why I'm so very leery and so very hesitant to take on any one, you know, <laughs> because I don't want to make promises. I don't want to be that predator inadvertently exactly. without intending to be because, right, right. It, you know, it, it's, it's such a 
it's well, you and I, real. you and I have the means because we, we understand the business of writing and publishing. We have the right. means to get the ebook and the and the print right. on demand at least, because uh, that's the affordable yeah. way to do right. it. Version of the of the print book and the ebook and right. even the audio book available on all the major platforms around yeah. the world, orderable through bookstores, orderable right. through libraries. So yes. you can pretty much get it anywhere. Right. Anyone can do that. Right. A publisher. So me going out and promising to an author that I'm going to get them something they can't get themselves is, is, is kind of a lie because they can do it themselves. They may not want to, but they can do it themselves. The one differentiator, and this is kind of like the advance of, well, how much are you giving me publisher? You know, right. I'm licensing my IP, my, my creative assets, my intellectual property to you so we can both make money. What are you giving me in return? Ideally, an advance of some sort. Ideally, some sort of decent royalties. I mean, most of the royalties right. I make from traditional publishing are eight uh, yeah. percent, you know, of, of of the which is minimal. Yeah. Um, but the one thing I can guarantee you, like uh, in Dundurn, I'm with Dundurn, uh, which is Canada's largest independent publisher, so they're a, a larger entity in Canada. They can do something for me that I can't do for myself. They have great editors. I can hire editors, great, but they have great editors in house, great to work with, uh, great publicity, publicity people, etc. But they get my book into bookstores. They get my book into independent bookstores, into chain bookstores. I've walked into cities throughout the states of well, Florida, walk into an independent bookstore, find my book on the shelf. And when I was in Vegas last, walked into a Barnes Noble, found one of my books on the shelf there. Um, it, you know, that happened naturally because they have huge distribution. They've gotten right. my books at Costco and Walmart right. and, and other places like that. So that's something that a, a, a publisher can do for you. And, and, and so you and I just hanging up a shingle and saying we can do all these things. I can't. I've been worked in the industry since 1992. I know the ins and outs of how this works. I can't afford to pay $100,000 right. to warehouse a bunch of books in a warehouse in Tennessee right. or in Toronto uh, to make sure that the book can be available more easily to bookstores. So right. if your publisher is not offering you that, what are they doing for you? <laughs> That's the thing to, that I would ask. And the, the whole, you know, your book can be found online at all of those places that you just mentioned. Every Barnes yes. & Noble, every, as long as you go through a POD, which is print on demand uh, service, which right. are, um, you know, very easy to navigate now and uh, yeah. you know readily accessible and not often at a, a price prohibitive you know it's not it's not price prohibitive to right. do your as as long as you kind of know what what you're doing going into it do some research and, and things like that yeah i mean but, Kindle direct publishing you can publish direct to amazon for free you can right? you can use okay. draft to digital print beta and it's yes. free or uh, Ingram Spark, which does have a setup cost. But again, you're not paying for a thousand copies to be printed. Right. You, you're paying a, a minimal setup fee and you're paying maybe right. an annual cataloging fee and that's it. Uh, right. So you don't have to invest tens of thousands of dollars. Right. You can exactly. do it uh, where you where I would advise if you're going to spend money, spend money on a good editor, spend money on a good cover designer. Those are two of the, the key things that you, you want to spend your money on. Or and, and I want to mention this. I mentioned I work with uh, Dundurn uh, and they have a publicist assigned to me, but you can hire a good publicist. And again, I was just about to say, <laughs> well, there are predatory publishers, uh, about yeah. publicists out publicists. there. Publicists. Uh, and, not, and, and, and there's a lot of great publicists, but I mean, the, the way that uh, publicists often uh, work is uh, a publicist at a book, uh, at a publisher is assigned to my book in the month that it comes out. Maybe they're right. working on it a month before, maybe if I'm lucky the month after, that's right. it. But I'm one of a hundred authors that they're working with. So they're, they're a little bit right. you know scattered. And chances are, I'm not a big name author. Chances are, if they have a big name author who's successful, they're going to put all their work and dedicate them to like the Stephen Kings, not to the Mark Leslies. And so uh, I hired uh, Creative Edge, Mickey from Creative Edge, just a couple of years ago. Uh, who's or also last year, sponsors yeah, the uh, Author sponsor Network and, Library. And, and what I love about this is I can have a book come out with a traditional publisher and know that I'll have an in-house publicist who is interested in selling that one book for the publisher because they only focus on front list. They don't focus on backlist. Mickey right. will look at any of my books and it, it doesn't matter if it's traditionally published or self-published. His job is to help me with my author brand and, and to get that awareness out there. So he's not limited to only right. focusing on these five books from this one publisher. He's focused on me and my brand. 
and and so and and where it's more of a partnership uh, in in that regard. And so yeah. even if you are traditionally published and have a publicist, you may want to look at how can I work directly with a publicist who will actually care about my book well beyond the the time that it's a new release <laughs> that and sort of do thing. and do your judicious research when doing that obviously we're both with creative edge publicity and there's a reason for that um because you know it's it's great it's number one is a great community but number two it's fantastic how you know we're able to communicate with um with mickey and uh with creative edge and talk through any issues that we're having or and there's a whole it's, it's kind of a holistic i don't want to use holistic but it's a whole yeah. kind of uh, author branding approach where it's not simply about like as you said like the first book or the 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 segment it's an entire branding process that is going on and there are things that a publicist can do that independent. If you don't hire a publicist, I've tried this on my own to get onto some big shows or big uh, into some big articles or something like that. And they would not even return my emails, guys. Right. So, but the minute that you are assigned with sign with a publicist a reputable and uh you know um a good publicist then you'll start to see these opportunities and you're like whoa i'm on nbc radio whoa i'm in a magazine whoa uh, and uh, you know like I i've tried to do that before and i couldn't on my own so there are definitely benefits you're, well they're getting an email from an agency not from some guy, not from right. some author, <laughs> right? Please, right. sir, exactly. will you look at my book? No, it's coming exactly. from my publicist who's sending the, the contact. So it's kind of like, oh, you, your people. Legitimacy, so, yes. So it, it, it does give, it does give, give that. Um, and again, let's be honest. It's like when I, when I say my publicist, you know, I can, I can right. say that and button up my jacket. Absolutely. And a little bit for, like I have a publicist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And, and, and then it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's no different than, than starting, you know, even if you're publishing, you're the only author under, you know, uh, XYZ publishing house. Um, then it still is on that copyright page and it still lends and, and it's on, on your bisacks and it's on your um your amazon on your barnes and noble on any what publisher and there's an actual yeah. name there For so sure. that lends a bit of legitimacy as well yeah exactly no no for sure yeah. and that, and that's really important because uh, a branding uh, and is really critical uh, the, the way that yeah. you you're presented to the world the way that uh, people see you uh, people judge. We know people judge books by their covers. They also judge authors by their covers, too. Right. Uh, and so, a lot of what you do within social media or within just the community in general, people are, are making judgment. So, you know, uh, you wanna you wanna take some care and to present a professional. Uh, or if not, by professional, I don't mean it has to be a certain right. Book and feel, but professional could be if I. Um, uh, I have a, a brand, uh, so you can kind of see in, in the video behind me, there's skulls behind me. So when I'm not, you know, representing the business of writing and publishing, I'll have a skull t-shirt on or a Spider-Man shirt on or something fun. And because that's the kind of fiction I write is creepy, scary, sort of, uh, you know, comic booky kind of fun things. Uh, and that's on brand with that Mark Leslie. Right. Now, the Mark Leslie right. Fave brand is a little bit more serious, a little bit more business oriented. And, and that's important, right? Is just recognizing that um, the consistency of your brand and how it relates to the books that you have out there. That's that's a that's a selling feature. It's a talking point. It's a it's it, it gets people interested. It is, and it's it's kind of uh, it kind of gets you. It kind of gets readers more familiar with who you are, what you write, and how you what they can expect to find inside of your books going into it, even before they even 
check out your work if they have the opportunity to see you say in your spider-man t-shirt or in your t and they say oh i like this guy you know he's 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 funny i can expect some wit and some humor in these books i can probably expect uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of goofiness at, at some times and some plot twists and some and and then they open the book and they say wow that's exactly what this is. This is awesome. <laughs> well, that's it, it lends to something you said earlier that reminded me of, of a really important thing to consider is people buy books from people they know, like, and trust. And that's why your brand is really, really critical, getting, getting the content out there, not just listed in the online catalogs, because right. people will will talk about books to friends. Some of my yes. best, some of my best new readers were people who were recommended by other people who loved reading Absolutely. the same thing. Because that is still, even though Amazon's a huge, powerful system, the number one reason of why people buy books is because somebody they trusted recommended it to them. Someone they believed. Word in. of mouth. Right. Word of mouth is still a huge, huge thing. And so oh. that's why, like I have Barnaby Bones, who's my skeleton hanging on the wall over there. He's a t-shirt on. I love Barnaby. I would bring him the book signings because... Yeah. People remember, oh, the guy with the skeleton, right? <laughs> so that was, you know, that's always been a part of the brand because either you see the skeleton and you go, oh, this guy writes creepy stuff. I'm very attracted to that. Or you think, don't make eye contact with the crazy bald man. He's got a skeleton beside him and they know it's not their cup of tea, right? right like my right. mom loves romance. She doesn't like my stuff. Right. She's not my target audience. So right, she right, would right. see the skeleton and be like, what's wrong with him? My mom does say that all the time, of course, because she says, Mark, why can't you write a nice story? Well, it's just like whenever you go to a signing, you know, and uh, I write young adult fantasy, this, you know, um, and so, uh, well, among others, but right now, I'm, uh, you know, whenever I did my last signing and, you know, you see an elderly woman come in and you know that she's most likely not your target demographic, then you let them walk on by. Yeah. And go to the cookbook <laughs> section or the, I'm not trying to profile anyone here. I'm not just saying that you're only looking for cookbooks. I don't know what you were looking for, but I'm pretty sure that it wasn't a right. vampire uh, werewolf romance book. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that see, that's where having some sort of proper indicator where, where, where they go, Ooh, I lo like that lady might very well like, Oh my God, vampire romance. I'm in sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> right because they, they, they could easily make that judgment before they even talk to you before they even get to the table right. um and, and that's something i also do when i'm doing a book signing uh thing because so you were at barnes noble recently i saw yeah yes and, yes so yep. one of the things is people are very curious and they want to know right what the book is but they don't want to go and be sold to because nobody wakes up no. and says, i, I be know sold nobody to. wants and to they, be jumped. Kind of leery because if it's not their cup of tea they don't want to disappoint the author and hurt their feelings so what i've done and i've usually i get uh, permission from the bookstore that I'm at is I'll take a small pile of my books and I'll place them with a little if there's a little banner or something that's a you know featured author today and the books are over far enough away that they they can be safely pick up the book check it look out look at it if it's not right. their cup of tea they go, you, and they walk without away. you sitting or right they, there they, looking or at them or you see their eyes light up and they're like oh this is me and they come running over to you right would you sign this for me and that works really, really well because people don't want, awesome. like people, generally people are nice. They don't want to hurt people's right. feelings. And I right. don't want sympathy. I don't want people to buy it because they feel sorry for me. I want them to buy it because they really want to. Because they're interested in it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because then they're more, they're more likely to read the book and they're more likely to enjoy the book because it's something that they're interested in. And therefore that translates to a review on Amazon, Goodreads. Barnes and Noble, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they tell, and they tell the friends, like, and oh they my tell God, you got to read Anna's new yeah. book. It's got whoa, 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 werewolves and vampires. Oh my, right? Like all the yes, stuff. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or, or, you know, hey, I found this great book and it talks about, you know, what you need to know whenever you're going into self-publishing. Aren't you getting ready to, you just finished, you got your book back from the editor. You've got to check this out because I think that you would really benefit from this, you know? Exactly. And so- yeah that's that's you know that that recommendation word of mouth type of thing or you know another author says hey i read this book i found it really informative it had a lot of information that i didn't know and i'm going to pass it on to you you know the book begins as a commerce transaction from the bookseller to the person and then it becomes a gift 
exchange. So yeah. then it's by word of mouth recommendation or actually physically handing over that physical copy. The person likes it and they buy their own book to keep right. <laughs> when they return. Hopefully you return your friend's books after they lend them to you. Um, well, I, I usually, when I loan a book to a friend, I pretty much pretty much don't expect to get, to get it back. back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, there's been books of mine uh, that I have bought and I always have a second copy on hand because someone comes over like, oh, I like to, it was like, oh, you got to read this. You won't be able to put it down. This will keep you up all night. And I just always have a second copy because I know I'm never going to That's awesome. Back. <laughs> That's awesome. So before, before we wrap up here, um, I, I wanted to ask what's, what is the, in your time of doing this, and especially now that you've released these books, I know that, that you've had the chance to talk with, do some other interviews. What overall is one of the biggest complaints, qualms, or questions uh, specifically that you get? And what would be your answer? I, I know well, it's I a huge, it's, 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 it's like a question within a question within a question within a question. Yeah. But if you had to pick like one huge thing that sticks out like a sore thumb that everybody wants to know about, yeah. what would so, that be? I'm going to have to go with a more generic response to that then because okay. there's so many different things people need. To I know. Ask. I think, but the thing, the biggest question, and it's not the question they're asking, but it's what the answer they want is they'll mm -hmm. ask a question with the expectation that there is some sort of magic bullet answer I know. that will solve all of their problems if only they had this one thing. Hey, and, you, and, if and, we had it, we'd share. Yeah, I'm not keeping it from you. There, there is no magic bullet. Our hard work, patience, and practice, and persistence is the magic bullet if you have, keep at it. So the one thing I would want authors to understand, there is no magic bullet. There's no secret recipe. There's no secret handshake. There are things you can do to become a better writer. There are business practices you can take. There are working on the craft. And, and, and like I said, uh, working with a good editor that helps make your writing better, helps you make a better writer. Working with a great cover designer that has an on-brand targeted cover that fits in with the categories of your target audience. Understanding who your target audience is and recognizing that there is no one way of doing anything. Anna has a way that she works uh, with her editor, with her publicist, with, with uh, publishing, with bookstores, all the things that she does, they work for Social her. Social media. Yeah, yeah, I have, I may be in, involved in the same things, but in a different way because they work differently for me. I work, for example, with the same publicist. We have different ways of working with the publicist that work really well for our brands. And so That's if somebody so comes along and says, you have to, you must, including me, if I say you have to and you must, my apologies, I get, I get excited about things and I say you shouldn't, <laughs> but you take that with a grain of salt. You right. consider where the person came from and you apply your own goals and experience and understanding and what you're comfortable with. If somebody says you have to do this thing, no, you don't. You don't have to do anything. Nope. <laughs> so what works for you? What works for your readers? What works for your author brand? And and so that's that's what I usually like to tell authors is don't don't get pigeonholed into thinking there's only one way of doing things. Right. The 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 if there was lots if of ways. There if if there was only one way to become successful as an author, we would all be successful. Yeah. And that's the truth of the matter is that every book is different. Every author is different. Every marketing campaign is different. Even your demographic is different. I mean, all of these things need to be taken into consideration. As Mark said, we both have the same publicist, but we have a different approach to the way that our books are marketed because they are different books and we are different authors. For sure. I mean, a perfect example. You have werewolves in your books. I yes. have werewolves in my books. Our audiences are not the same. No, Just because, because there's mine... werewolves doesn't mean that our audience, right. there may be crossover, people who, you know, but but yeah. I, I would say that we, we could write in, involving the same paranormal super <laughs> creatures and, right. and completely different audiences. Um, right, because mine mine is, is primarily geared towards uh, a, a female audience. I find more female demographics uh, because it is a paranormal romance at the end of the day. And it is less of a horror book than it is a romance book. 
And so I, you know, yours would be categorized as a, a more an adult uh, book, not not adult in that way, but adult, you know. <laughs> Although as, there and, is adult language, kid children. See, there we <laughs> the are. Word may be used. <laughs> may, may be used and used a lot. Um, but yes, so so yeah, so it's completely different because um, you know I, I don't I, I think uh, that that romance isn't probably one of the central focal points in the uh, in the Canadian werewolf series. Some readers, some readers have actually described it as romance. I'm like, it's not romance. I mean, there is love, but there's, <laughs> there's it's, it's, there's, it's like a subplot in there, yeah. but more, but it's more yeah. about, you know, this guy that's just like, you know, trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's kind of funny, but different, but again, every reader is open to their own interpretation and they may like it for different right. reasons. I mean, I don't exactly. consider myself a romance reader, but I've certainly read and, and, and enjoyed so many different romance novels. I can't write romance. I can't. It's just right. not my cup exactly. of tea. And, and that's one thing that I had to come to, to terms with and kind of had to be, <laughs> is that although you have a specific uh, genre in mind for your book and that's where you want it to be you need to have kind of an also a broad overview for because you just never know when that romance author or that thriller uh, sorry the reader is going to say hey you know I haven't read I can't remember when the last time I read a good romance is and that sounds like something that might get me back into the genre. So you just never know. You want to hit every every possible uh, you know chance that you have to market your book. Right. Yeah. So don't pigeonhole yourself either. You know. No. 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 Not at all. Not be, be open to be be open yeah. to possibilities uh, for sure. Well, Mark, thank you so much for taking time out of your day today to talk uh, a little bit about um, publishing and uh, all kinds of stuff. Guys, definitely check out the series because and the relaxed author um, with uh, Mark Leslie Lefebvre and Joanna Penn uh, is available now as is um let's see what is the the other one that you have um, publishing out, pitfalls for authors. publishing pitfalls for authors um both out just recently released so go check those out uh they are wide and you can find you can them. ask for them at your at your favorite local library too there you go <laughs> and that as well so thank you so much for coming on and some, giving us some insider information and answering yet more questions about publishing <laughs> My pleasure, and, Anna. Always, always a great time chatting with you. All right, guys, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss out on great content like this that you never would have known of if you hadn't tuned in today. Um, Mark, thank you again. Everybody else, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you soon. Bye.